I remember the day the Korean War started. My unit, A Battery, 8th Field Artillery Battalion, 25th Infantry Division, was training at the base of Mount Fuji in Japan. We had been there since mid-June of 1950, firing our 105 millimeter howitzers, and I was A Battery Motor Sergeant. I was 22 years old and on my second tour in Japan. A Japanese airliner had crashed somewhere in the mountains around Fuji, and we dispatched several jeeps to join in the search. Around noon, the plane was found, and we returned to the base camp to find everyone packing up to return to our home base in Nara. News was pretty scarce, and about all we knew was that North Korea had invaded South Korea. At Nara, we began preparing to go to Korea by storing all extra equipment or, as our battery commander said, getting down to fighting shape. We were fortunate in that several of the non-commissioned officers and officers had World War II experience. We felt trained for any event. In a couple of days, President Truman committed the U.S. to aid South Korea in repulsing the invasion from the north. The 24th Division, stationed in southern Japan, sent a task force to make contact with the North Koreans and we were to join them as soon as possible. Arrangements were made, an A battery was loaded on a Japanese freighter in Osaka, and two days later, on July 10th, we docked in Pusan, South Korea. We landed just at dark, and all dock personnel had gone home. Owing to the urgency of the situation, and with the help of the ship's sailors, we unloaded and made camp in a schoolyard. After posting guards, we all waited for dawn. I doubt anyone slept. In the morning, we joined with the 27th Infantry Regiment to form the 27th Regimental Combat Team, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Czech. Before moving out, we were told to strip down, paratrooper style, to weapons, ammunition, water, and rations. We were told to remember that we were here to kill and not be killed. Colonel Michaelis, the commander, directed the 127 and A battery to the north and east of Daegu into the mountains near Wisong to help the Republic of Korea forces who were retreating down the east coast. The rocks evidently were putting up more resistance than expected, and we had time to adjust mentally and physically to the shift to a combat mode. During this time, we experienced our first real combat. We had positioned our 105s in a riverbed 300 to 500 yards from a long bridge, crossing a north-south river with the town of Wisong on the east end. Someone pointed out a plane approaching from the south at about 8 to 10,000 feet. Almost at the same time, a series of explosions occurred in Wisong and I, and the entire battery, realized that the plane had attempted to bomb the bridge, but it missed and hit Wisong, which was burning. The bomber then circled and flew out to make a west to east track to parallel the bridge. I could see the bomb bay doors open, and as the bombs came out, they looked as if they were going to drop right into my foxhole, which I was desperately trying to dig deeper. The pilot again missed the bridge. Our liaison pilot, Captain Lawrence, had landed his L-4 artillery spotter plane on the road near our position. He had recognized it as a U.S. Air Force plane and by the time it came around for the third time, he had contacted the pilot and informed him that we were on his side, or words to that effect. The pilot apologized, turned south, and left the area. From then on, we were leery of any planes coming near our position. A couple days later, we were relieved by a unit from the 1st Cavalry Division, and the commanding general of the 8th Army, General Walton Walker, made the 27th Regimental Combat Team his fire brigade, to be used to plug any hole or back up any unit that might need some help. 